first 30 minute of the podcast. I do want to start off with some, hmm, I don't know, sad news, I guess. Um, I guess I don't know if everybody heard about it or seen, but it's all been on, on the news lately. But the quiet on set, um, it's about it's a documentary about Nickelodeon, uh, the dark underbelly at Nickelodeon. A documentary allegedly toxic, uh, a documentary on allegedly toxic working conditions for child actors at Nickelodeon during its golden age has reignited criticism on the kids TV powerhouse. The four part docuseries will premiere Sunday on Investigation Discovery and is st streaming on Max interviews, former writers, crew members and child actors who describe a volatile, that's dysfunctional and sometimes sexualized environment as some of Nickelodeon's most successful TV shows in the mid 19 in the mid 90s. Oh, sorry, in the mid 90s and early 80s. What the fuck? They got that all fucked up. Quite on set zooms in on a former producer, Dan Snyder, the creator of force behind his shows, including iCarly, The Amanda Show, and all that. Snyder was instrumental in launching the careers of teen stars such as Amanda Bynes, Ariana Grande, and Drake Bell, who revealed in a documentary he was the unnamed victim in a child sexual abuse trial that sent a former Nickelodeon uh, dialogue coach to prison in the mid 2000s. And um, I don't know if you guys saw this, though, but uh, they had actually Drake's father. He actually um, did a response to the documentary. I was going to play it. It's just a quick 50 second little clip, if you guys want. Don't mind. Oh, uh, you can rock out. All right. Producer, play the video. Oh, wait, I'm the producer. I'm, I'm the producer. My bad. All right. All right. Hold on. Here we go. You hear a scuttlebutt about the business and what you got to watch your kids and this and that. So I was very attentive. All the other parents would be seen and not heard, which I would never interrupt anything, but very rarely set in the green room. I'd always be offset somewhere where I could always keep my eyes on Drake. And unfortunately, I started seeing Brian start to just hang around Drake too much. And it didn't, didn't set well with me. Drake would be in the dressing room or something and in would pop Brian and um, uh, just touch Drake. You know, do things that, wait a second, what are you doing? Drake can put that on himself. And the thing is, this is in front of people. Then he'd, he'd maybe walk over to Drake and be feeding him some lines or whatever and put his arm around his waist, put his hand up on his shoulder and kind of run it down his arm and things like that. And this would happen routinely was just always uncomfortable. Yeah, so that was Drake's dad responding to the docuseries and what he had to say about everything on there. Uh, what's your guys? Wait, wait. Wait, yeah. I, I, must, I must be too fried. That's his dad? <laughs> That's Drake's dad, yes, sir. And he, he knew about this? Um. So he's seen things on a set. He didn't know that, you know, Drake was being sexually assaulted and everything like that, but he said that he's seen strange things on a set. And... um. Drake actually, he, uh, him and his dad had an estranged relationship a little bit um, in between that. And when he saw that he went to jail, there was another video, but I didn't want to play it because it's too long. There's a video where uh, Drake says that um, he told his dad because in a lawsuit, he was named unnamed. They didn't have Drake Bell in a lawsuit when dude went to jail. He was unnamed. And uh, Drake called his dad the day that it happened and told him that he you saw that he went to jail. He said, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then he admitted to him that he was an unknown child that they was talking about that got sexually abused and stuff like that. And his dad cried and, and all that. So his dad didn't know, but his dad was suspecting shit was going on. They kicked him off set and brought his mother on. Damn. That, that's actually crazy. In situations like this, I just imagine if that was like my son in those situations. Right? Facts. Facts. Like, crash out central like come on right for real <laughs> doing a decade oh my goodness that's, that's good but not all, go ahead. Go ahead. now i was about to say like i didn't necessarily look too much into this but i did hear, see see a lot of people talking about it on twitter and i heard i heard like people that were actually on the cast of drake and josh they were writing like letters of like support for the character of the Snyder. abuse you're like mm -hmm. yeah like it, it was crazy and then like seeing drake have to like actually act and perform with the people who actually did write letters to support his abuser. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. There's more though. Um, so some cast, crew, and parents said they were afraid to push back because of the influence a child 
star Kingmaker will be in the industry. Snyder doesn't appear in the docuseries and didn't respond to questions for the Washington Post, but he apologized in a 20 minute video with Bougie, who played Tebow and I Carly. He said, watching over the past two nights was difficult, me facing my past behavior, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret. And I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. Snyder said in the video, which published on YouTube channel Tuesday. Here are some of the most disturbing allegations in the documentary, though. Christy Staten on and Jenny Kilgan, who said they were legally forced to share salary as the only two female writers for the Amanda show, detailed the sexism they saw they faced during the show's first season include Stratton being asked for Snyder to act as if they were being sodomized in a writer's room. Snyder, in his YouTube video, apologized for the inappropriate jokes he made while leading the writer's room. You always felt like disagreeing with Dan or standing up for yourself could result in getting fired, Kilgan said. After the Writers Guild of America told Snyder to give Stratton and Kilgan separate salaries, Kilgan said Snyder threatened to make sure she never worked on another Nickelodeon show again if he found out she tipped off the union. Sam from iCarly wrote in a book about her mom a few years ago. I don't remember, know if you guys heard about that. She mentioned someone in a book by the name of the creator. Come to find out the creator was Snyder. She said, and I quote, the creator was mean spirit, controlling and terrifying. She wrote, he made grown men and women cry with his insults and degradation and pressured her to drink alcohol when she was 18. Bell, uh, Drake stated when he was 15, he said he woke one day to peck sexually assaulted him on a couch. Bell recounted the abuse, which lasted six months, as extensive and brutal. Imagine the worst thing someone can do to someone as sexual assault. Bell said, I don't know how else to put it. Bell said he turned to drugs and alcohol to escape his experience after Peck's conviction. Bell has since been arrested for drunk driving and has been accused of sexual abuse himself in 2021. I don't know if you guys heard about that when Drake got accused of sexually assault one of his fans, too. Uh, he was sentenced yeah. to three years probation for child endangerment after a former accused of a mental yeah. And then Amanda Bynes stated when she was 11, her, her mother encountered how seemingly innocent email exchanges from her daughter and then Nickelodeon producer assistant Jason Handy. And then when she discovered a picture of Handy naked and sending, in, uh, he was he was saying, I don't want to say the word, he was emming in of the girl's inbox. So he was sending uh, pictures of him emming to her when she was 11 years old. And amongst other allegations. So, yeah, that's that's all for that. That's all I have for that right there. But I just wanted to bring that to people's attention because I think that's important. Um, this was all a conspiracy theory years ago about child actors and what they go through and stuff like that and like sexual abuse and um, and television and entertainment and stuff like that. And now all that stuff is coming to light. So I thought that was important to share with the people and just to get you guys this opinion on. No, yeah, I mean. Me personally, I, as, I, as I said, I haven't really looked too much into it. I feel like my childhood is kind of being ruined. Facts. Yeah, Facts. like definitely ruined my childhood, bro. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. A lot of times, like again, when I go back to watch Drake and Josh, it's not. I'm pretty sure it's, it's not, not really gonna feel. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna have the same last. Every time we look back and watch most of the other shows, we're probably gonna look for some feet in the windows because the guy was supposedly. Yeah, that was like there that. too. I just didn't want to put too much in this. Like, I, it was a lot more that I could have put. It's a lot of stuff, but I didn't yeah. want to like drag this out too long. But there's so much more that I didn't cover on this. Yeah, so like, I feel like a lot of this stuff is going to be tainted. What I'm hoping is like in 20 years, I'll forget about it and I could just watch all this stuff. And like, <laughs> like hopefully, <laughs> I'll just still have some sort of enjoyment. Oh no, bro! Like I can't even take the sliming thing serious no more. You remember when they used to slime people and slime kids? No, like ah, oh, bro, oh, like yeah. it doesn't even. Yeah, like it just, <laughs> even when I was a kid though, that shit used to hit weird though. Like, uh, for real, like I was a like kid still looking at that kind of weird. So yeah, but. Um, and lighter news though, uh, we got something exciting happening. Dragon Ball theme park to commence construction in Saudi Arabia. Now, that's not good news for us Americans unless you got money to go to Saudi Arabia. But the official website for Dragon Ball franchise announced on Friday that Saudi Arabia based uh, Kidea Investments Company will construct the world's first ever Dragon Ball theme park. The company streamed the concept video for the park, uh, for the park, which would be part of its uh, Quiddy Giga project. And this is the park right here. It's, it's a real quick video. It's actually really nice. Check it out. A wish has been granted. Calling adventurers. 
from across the globe. Arabia after the discovery of Dragon Balls with wish granting powers to experience an unprecedented immersive entertainment destination <laughs> Here fantasy and thrills collide play a part in the epic sagas coming to Saudi Arabia in the first city built for play. Man, that shit look fire. It needs to come to America. The park will span 500,000 square meters and feature over 30 rides and attractions. The company is planning a 70 meter high Shenron roller coaster as the highlight of the park. The park will feature seven different areas that recreate various iconic locals from their original series, such as Kame House, Capsule Corporation, and Briars' Planet, and also feature theme hotels and restaurants. To, to be honest, oh, a couple of things. I think Saudi, this right here sounds almost perfect for Saudi Arabia because they have like all the money to, to spend on stuff like that to make it like look absolutely impeccable. I feel like, oh, another thing, Saudi Arabia, for the one one or two people in the audience that knows this reference, Saudi Arabia about to give R Rafinha about 100 million. So, you know, they got money. I One well, of the things Saudi that Arabia I do want to, yeah, one of the things that I do want to know is like how accurate this thing is actually going to look. Because I don't know if you guys know, but there was like a bootleg Willy Wonka, Charlie and Chocolate Factory type of thing that was like being promoted. And like all the advertising, yeah, I heard about that. absolutely elite. Yeah, all, ad all advertisements look elite. But as soon as people pulled up, like it looked absolutely horrific, bro. They had like mm -hmm. Jolly Ranchers, yeah. They, they had like some sort of candy in like a bowl, and the people were just like taking candy out of the bowl, like, like a fire festival. Like, <laughs> I forgot, I forgot what it was, but like no, you remember like, the fire festival that Ja Rule did? They had promoted it, it looked beautiful as fuck, and then people was in tents and all type of garbage shit. Paid all this money oh, yeah. to go. Yeah, I I wasn't tapped in with the fire festival, but yeah, it sounded almost exactly like that. Yeah false advertising and everything so i'm hoping that this right here is going to look good because it's in saudi arabia it gives me hope that they're going to do it like the best because of the money that they do have so like I, if it if it looks good one of the things that i am hoping for i'm hoping that other people will possibly try to copy it because if this right here could actually be the pioneer of like realistic anime real life type of things real life crossovers there's been people that tried to do it before there are like anime like spots but like mm -hmm. I think Saudi Arabia could do it like big, and if they do really do it correctly, a lot of people could start copying. And then uh, me personally, I'm looking for Naruto and Dragon Ball to potentially come to America. I, I hopefully we do get to see some stuff like that because they are doing like a lot of theme parks and stuff in Miami and also in the middle of America nowadays. Facts, facts. Yeah, Melo. Um, I think it's it's a cool concept. I just don't like who's bringing it about. Um. But yeah, if we had something like that in the states, that would be pretty, pretty, um, pretty interesting, you know. Um, I'm actually surprised we haven't had something like that. But uh, like Bar said, it could be a good little start, a good little spark that could maybe um, pique the interests of other people, other, um, you know, nations or whatever the case may be. I just don't like Saudi Arabia. I don't even like the WWE when they go to Saudi Arabia. It's just like they're, so, they're just backwards as fuck. Um, and they're like very they do a lot of dirt now everybody does dirt right but. yeah i'm about to say we, we just got we just got done talking about nickelodeon bro <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no um, um yeah go ahead i'm sorry but but yeah yeah yeah. not not trying to get too political with it or at all but um i think the theme park is pretty interesting con conceptually wise um I, i'm uh oh you know i don't know i i, I like the idea the concept it's just the thing that takes the winds out of my sails is that it's in Saudi Arabia. It's, it's <laughs> the awesome. winds out of your sails. That's fine. I will personally uh, never go to Saudi Arabia. Um, mm. uh, but also, um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. I'll just leave it at Mello that. Mello got smoke with Saudi Arabia. But I, really, I think it's a... But, uh, I'm just yeah. playing. I'm just playing. I think it's a dope idea. I think it could be a, like a precursor to like a um, it's like a Disney World. You know, it could be the start of something great. You know, 20 years down the line, it could be an amazing theme park that we have in different countries. Like, same bring that to america and all the dragon ball enthusiasts is going to go <laughs> no matter what all the time bring their kids you know um i think
think since Toriyama died, it sparked a new renaissance of Dragon Ball as well. Like just his death just hit people so so hard that you know everybody just want that Dragon Ball experience. I think it's a great idea. I just wonder if Akira Toriyama before he died had any input in this before you know they started constructing it. Um, because this was just news that was announced uh, yesterday. I want to say. Hmm. I doubt it. I doubt it. Um. He, he's a he's a mangaka. He's not like a architect or. Um, I mean that doesn't matter so much though. They can like you know, he can have ideas and give them like you know inspiration for, you know like uh, beers. Like they had, they said they're going to have like Beerus House and Kami's Kami's House and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like you know, he can just give them ideas on how to make it look and stuff like that. I guess. Um, I mean they can they can just look at the material. Like I I just that's true. Yeah, that's true. Like the idea that like a mangaka has to have like their hands in every cookie jar that has something to do with their series. Doesn't make sense right. to me, but I, in this particular project, no, I don't think he would. There would be a, a utility for him to even be there. Um, but I'm sure with a project like, like um... that, I'm sure with a project like that, there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen in general. Mm-hmm. And um, and, and to be honest, I'm not even sure if Akira Toriyama cared that much. Um, wouldn't he have to Dragon give the Ball? okay though because it's his project? Well, I don't. You know, like it's. I don't know who owns the domain. property rights or um the the IP. Like I think he sold it actually. Or a committee, you're right. You're right. Um, that type Dragon of stuff. You're right. You're right. But in like yeah. a hypothetical um universe where he did have all the rights or whatever, which I don't think is the case. Um, he no, who just you know look at the project, sign off on it, um, and then they the people who are then in control of the project will handle all the uh, all the placement, the visual aesthetics and stuff because they have a vested interest in getting that stuff correct. It's not mm-hmm. like they're going to insert their own like whatever into it. It's like it's supposed to be Dragon Ball World. You go to Kame's Lookout, um, you want it to look like Kame's Lookout. You don't want it to look like uh Jonathan's vision of what Kame's Lookout will look. Um, no, I don't know. That doesn't make sense. But yeah, this is my opinion, though. No, I feel you, though. I feel you. Um, yeah, because he did sell a lot of the rights to Dragon Ball. I know um, Disney owns the rights to Dragon Ball in America. So, yeah, you, you have a point there. So who knows who owns the rights in Saudi Arabia? It could be a different company. So you have a you have a great point there. But uh, to move on to the next news so we can get into the to the review. Just the last thing here. Borto returns 2025. Allegedly. I just want to put that in allegedly. Put that in quotation marks. Now, this is came from X. I don't know how credible this source is right here, but I'm going to see what they have to say. Um, let me uh, share the screen real quick. I didn't have this room actually super prepared. All right. So it says Borto to Blue Vortex anime has been announced for 2025. So this is the little thing right here. And this new Borto anime will probably be seasonal, so we'll have zero fillers and will also be a collaborative between Periyot Studio and Mappa. No, uh, I don't know because I also was doing a little bit of research, doing my Googles, and I saw this. Uh, it says, leaks circulating online has revealed once that highly anticipated return of the Borto anime has been delayed significantly. Previously rumored to be on a brief hiatus, fans now face the prospect of waiting several more years between before the series resumes. According to the leaks, the Boruto anime is unlikely to make its comeback before 2027 or 2028. According to the leaks, if Studio Periat decides against the delay, a potential return for Boruto may come at the cost of lower animation quality. Moreover, the decision to delay Boruto's anime return comes on the heels of an interview with Studio Periat's managing director, Kario Utsumi shedding light on the studio's future plans. The animation studio tends to prioritize high quality anime, which can complete compete globally, suggesting a shift to seasonals rather than long running formats. This revelation has sparked mixed reactions among the fan base. So I'm, I'm not sure how accurate this is. People say it's coming out next year, but I'm also seeing that it's uh, studio Periot says if it does come out within a year, then it's going to have um, low quality animation. So I don't know what's better, getting the anime real quick or waiting and getting some high quality anime. But I don't know what's your guys' opinion. Yeah, I, me personally, I don't fully believe it yet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I must. I might be a pessimist or something like that. But I, I'm not going to believe anything until I see some like actual official word on it. I mean, we this right here kind of goes on with. Dragon Ball Super as well, and I understand. Shout out my guy Geek them. He did have some. He did have some decent intel. I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that he was wrong or try intentionally misleading, 
But like things change. Like even if hypothetically we did get it like a, like some intel a month ago that did say that the series is going to restart in 2027 or 2028, like it's not out of the question that something changes and it comes back in 2025. And just like this recent report, this could be like a legitimate rumor. But like in, in like a couple of months, it changes again and it, 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 it gets pushed back. We see this with Dragon Ball Super. We see this with other animes as well. It's like I, me personally, I think this right here is definitely a decent topic, or a, de- a definitely dis- a decent discussion. Like, would you prefer the anime to come back in 2025 if it did mean that we were to get, if we were to get seasonal and it, the animation may not actually be like up to par, or would you prefer to wait until 2027? I think that's a decent discussion. But in regards to like actually taking these things like credible. I personally wouldn't do it until I start. So I start see see some like actual tweets from a lot more credible people. Don't want to necessarily say the people who did actually tweet it out weren't fully credible, but like hypothetically, if there was one source that I really trust that tweeted it out, I'd wait for two or three more people to actually tweet it out. And me personally, I don't fully know this source. Like man, them Joe so Schmoes ain't I trust, I wouldn't believe it. Hmm? Them Joe Schmoes ain't credible. Hey, you never know. You never know. I had to do my googles, and I don't see nothing about Borto coming back, bro. All I see is X posts. That's all. I don't know. It stuff like this, my personal opinion. Like, I don't necessarily think it's gonna be like too too much from like official stuff. Like, I don't I, I don't necessarily think that the board to account is gonna tweet out when the board to anime is coming back at first. Like, I think the first time that we're gonna get to hear it, we're probably gonna get to hear it from like other people on Twitter. We're probably gonna get to hear it from leakers, but like until I get to see multiple different reports from multiple people that I do trust. I'm probably not going to believe it. Hey, and see, Hammer said we was getting the time skip last year, and look what happened. It happened. It wasn't like a like a studio that announced it or anything like that. It was a YouTuber. So, you know, people yeah. might have their insights. Who knows? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. But but I also do want to caution people. Like, hypothetically, if this guy, um, I forgot his name. I think it was Dyson or something like that. But it, hypothetically, he le- legitimately did get word from someone with actual connections to boruto that they that the anime was going to restart in 2025 again i wouldn't be surprised if in two or three months they just push it back another two or three years like, mm-hmm. yeah i mean i wouldn't mind it for a higher quality animation like i'm not really a die hard I, I, shoot i hardly watch tv so my opinion is subjective like i rarely just sit there and watch a television show or anything like that i'm like mostly a youtuber like i, I sit there and watch youtube videos all day so it doesn't bother me too much and they get mm-hmm. higher quality anime, like for instance, Bleach Thousand Year Blood War. I don't mind waiting for it to come back or like Attack on Titan. I didn't mind them splitting it up. Like it, it was a headache at the time. But if you go back and watch it cinematically and watch it like episode for episode, you appreciate the time that they took in like developing the anime. You know, like everything is beautiful. Like you can watch it episode for episode and really can't find any flaws in it. So they can do Boruto the same way and people can come back and like, it's not really too much fillerish. Like if they do add filler, they just add filler here and there. And it's mostly just um, um, manga based um, content. Then I think it can go far, especially if the animation is up to par and it's top notch. But it's going to look weird <laughs> if you ever watch board so uh, canonically, um, not canonically, I'm sorry, from beginning to end, like in the future, you're going to see like shitty ass anime. Well, not shitty anime. I'm not, I don't want to harp on the animation, but like inconsistent anime animation for Boruto part one and then Boruto part two, you got this freaking amazing anime. So I don't know. Animation, uh, I see I say, you, not anime. No, I see what you mean. I, I personally wouldn't totally mind that, but it, well, if specifically with that, like, I think that's kind of similar with Naruto as well, but with Naruto, it was like the regular, it was like the regular progression of animation. Like, and yeah. I remember like at the beginning of, mm-hmm. at the beginning of Naruto, the aspect ratio was like nine to six or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then it changed mm-hmm. to 16 to 11. So like, yeah, it's gonna look. You can see that in One over Piece t- as well. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm watching the earlier One Piece episodes, and they look kind of like. I mean, the newer One Piece episodes because I skipped the skip one because I wanted to watch this fight when Luffy mm-hmm. turned Gear Five. I wanted to watch that, so I skipped all the way to that. But I've been, uh, well, I'm thinking I'm on like episode 300 or something like that now. But like mm-hmm. the animation, like over time, progressively gets better because of you know time. Like the anime, anime. Well, how, how long has the anime been out, Melo? The no One clue. Piece, the probably like One Piece decades. Decades. Yeah, I would say maybe twenty. Around years. the same same time, around the same amount of time as Dragon Ball, right? Or a little bit no, less. Dragon Ball came first. I, I know it came about, first, but well, I, well, I don't know. Around the same time period. 
yeah, I don't know. at least 10 year time span. But anyways, right. like, yeah, progressively, yeah, progressively, you see it like it, it gets better. Like 300 is like the animation for 300 is way better than it was on episode one. Yeah. And, and me personally, like, I don't I mean, I'd, I'd prefer the animated come back in 2025, man. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> but I, I, and that, I, and I understand channel jump back jumping so you can do uh, anime reviews. It's not even that. Like, <laughs> they, they ain't no guarantee I start uploading when that come out I either. Know, but I like, I, 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 the thing is, I don't, I'm not completely sure that they need two full years to make the, the anime like the best product that it could possibly be. Like, I don't. I feel like a lot of that two years until 2027 would just be like time spent lollygagging or possibly working on other series or stuff like that. I don't know. But uh, again, I feel like it would be the smartest idea to possibly wait if they were to actually use that time like smartly like and they don't necessarily have that time stuff that they had back in the past like with the other stuff in part one they had multiple different studios working on it so like you could tell studio parrot like yo you don't have to work this month just worry about this one date in like two and i won't say two months this one date next month have that episode prepared and like i don't know th- and they couldn't ne- necessarily perfect that so with this it my question is, is all the episodes going to be already complete by the time it comes back? If that's the case, I'd understand it. But if they don't necessarily do that, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily understand. I think they could that they, that they could just do everything correctly. But if they do wait, I would say this like it only feel bad for like the, the years that we have to wait. I think if it happens to actually do, do come out in like 2027 and we do get like a lot better production and a lot better animation, I feel like no one's really going to care about the time of 2024, 2025, 2026, and half of 2027 or whatever it is. No one's really going to care. So I feel like it'll be worth it, but like I just don't necessarily know if they're going to use that time correctly, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I feel you on that. Um, Shoot, like I said, bro, I'm all for better animation. I'm, I'm willing to wait. I think that the manga is doing a great job of keeping up the hype of Boruto, like not letting it die down. So when and whenever the anime do chooses to come out, I think it's going to be a big, a, um, it's going to be a big hype around it. It's going to be like everybody's going to be waiting on it, and it's going yeah, to blow yeah. it out of the water. So like you know, the more a lot of time waiting is good though. Like it build build anticipation, and then sometimes it's better for the series for you know to build that anticipation. So when it drops, hopefully they meet everybody's expectations or exceeds it. So if they can take their time and possibly exceed everybody's expectations, that's a plus for the for the anime and it's a plus for the community as well. All board so fast. So it's a win-win. You got to do a little waiting. Hopefully you don't die before it come out, but... Facts. Facts. <laughs> heavy on that. Bro, I remember when the Tournament of Power was out. That was my all my fear. I was like, bro, just let me live to see the end of it. Like, I just want to see the end of it, Lord, please. Yeah. Just let me live to see that. Because I'd be mad as hell. I died the day before the end of the Tournament of Power happened. I bro, I, I used to, bro, I used to be thinking that with so much stuff, bro. The day before I got my iPhone, the day before, like, a big wrestling match come on, bro, back when I was a kid, bro. Bro, don't think, bro. I used to think, bro, what s- some disaster could happen. I never really get to see the ending of it, bro. Mm-hmm. What the? So disastrous, bro. Yes. No. Yeah, bro. Uh, but yeah. <laughs>